Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar dashboard that wow. So we are just coming up on the hour and um, we've got a few people coming in. So um, thanks for those who are here nice and early. But uh, we'll kick off in about uh, kind of 30 seconds and then everyone come in. So I'll be back with you shortly. All right. Well, thanks everyone for uh, joining me here today. Uh, my name is Daniel Shaw Dennis, and I'll be taking you through for the next kind of 25, 30 minutes or so, um, talking about, you know, as the heading says, dashboards that were really looking at enhancing your data through beautiful uh, design. Now, I've been part of the analytics world for, for better or worse, for over 20 years, scarily enough, and I've seen some horrendous dashboards in my time and been guilty of making a few in my younger days. Um, but also seeing that when you get it right and can present information the way it makes sense for your users or your customers, that can really make a massive difference um, both to your organization or the applications uh, that you're going to build. Um, and really, you know, that's part of the reason why we're here today because if once again if you can get this in the right position um, if you are building data products it's a real opportunity first and foremost to stand out from the competition to not be the standard pie charts bar charts that you tend to see everywhere but really trying to create data in the workflow that your customers need and if you can do that you can really drive value, whether it's in an enterprise, in terms of efficiency, and actually being able to interpret and understand and provide better decision support, or for your customers to provide similarly more value from the data in your applications. And that, of course, can lead to additional revenue streams. You can do it better and provide more value. Um, as I said, there's potential in that as well. Um, so I'm gonna talk through uh, a few things today in relation to that. But also, you know, if you don't get it right, and I think a lot of us on this call have seen this before, um, you get what I call the kind of tick the box reports, the things that are just there and you know they're there, but kind of no one ever uses them, but someone many moons ago asked for them. Um, you often see this in terms of metrics from metric state. You see, you know, dashboard with reams and reams of information and you know that's hard to interpret when in reality you just want to get a few things out to understand what's going on and then make a better decision and with that in mind there's a real afterthought on value there's often a just want to get something out present the information that we have and not really thinking about well how are my customers and my users actually using this information to make a decision and how can I potentially present this in a way that's going to really help them get to a decision in a better, faster, more insightful way. And that's when you're really thinking about value versus just trying to get information onto a page. So really today, um, firstly, what this is not going to be, um, this is not going to be, um, you know, where to position a report, how to size it up, how to group, um, all important things, but this is not about the kind of the fundamentals in terms of placement and colours and all those types of things. We have heaps of best practice guides and we've done lots of webinars on this before so if this is your cup of tea um, jump on the Yellowfin YouTube site you can see a lot of this stuff or the website which has um, a lot of content in relation to this but today um, as I said I'm going to keep it nice and brief and hopefully punchy and something you can kind of remember after the next kind of 25 minute, minutes um, first I'm going to talk about beautiful effective design this is, as I said, not design for just design's sake and having, you know, colours for the sake of it or a logo, but really thinking about how does this information work and the workflow in which someone's using it and being able to design something that really fits that workflow. Um, I'm going to talk about context. You know, how do you help your users, your customers understand the information and provide more context around it so they can make better, more informed decisions? And lastly, action. You know, when the information that you surface can really 
lead to an action, you know you're providing value. So thinking about, well, what is the actions that potentially your users and customers are going to, going to take after consuming this information? And, and, and you know, I'll, I'll show through, sorry, I'll go through, um, really as part of today, a whole lot of real examples. Um, I was taking away logos and numbers, et cetera, but real examples of, of you know, those three things um, to see what an impact it can be. I'm also going to show you kind of life before and after. So starting with, you know, a simple kind of standard um, visualization and how to potentially add design context and action to really transform that into something of greater value. And I'll also go through some live examples to see it in action, you know, versus just having a, a, an item in a slide deck. Now, if there are any questions, um, there is a panel within the GoToWebinar uh, uh, little control panel that you see there, so please pop them down and I will get to um, all of them um, at the end of the session. So let's get into beautiful, effective design. And as I was saying earlier, you know, it's not just about putting your logo, your colours and just trying to look neat and tidy, that, well, that's, you know, that's, that's important. It's really about thinking how are people using this information and how can I present it in a way that's going to make sense for your users, that's going to um, use this term a lot, um, thinking about that workflow of data and you're representing it in a way that makes sense for them. Now the first example I'm going to talk about is a sports deck example. So this one, it's around analysing player data uh, and injury information. Now thinking about how this might previously been represented, you might have you know, team information, spreadsheet format, sifting through to analyse where your injuries, what's occurred, etc. to help you know, clinicians and, and team doctors understand what's going on and then can treat players accordingly. But then there's other ways you can present this that can provide potentially more value. So here, here's one example um, of potential way you can present this type of information that is far more valuable. Now straight away I can visualise the player so I know who it is and I know my eyes are drawn to the, that body image straight away and, and you know without even thinking I can kind of see that Nolan has probably more shoulder challenges um, than anything else. So straight away I can understand visually um, what's happening with Nolan and then look at the more traditional analytics and the detail around that to understand what that looks like, time, etc. So thinking about a clinician or a team doctor who are treating, you know, dozens or hundreds of players versus going through a you know spreadsheet type information, be able to visually see that player, see their injuries, and then go into the detail is a far more insightful, quicker. Um, and a much stronger way to present the data and consume that data as well. You know, having something like this, what we call a raster map, um, to be able to pinpoint and visually quickly see um, will make it, it make, makes a huge difference. Um, I know that now, I mean, we've had this example for a while, whenever I see Nolan play baseball, I always think, you know, how's his shoulder? Is it okay? Because I've already associated that with him because I've used this kind of example in a few um, sessions before. But that's the kind of association, if you get it right, um, that clinician there knows and can associate and can go, go forward. Um, so really thinking about, as I said, the workflow and how, in this case, it's clinicians and doctors who are treating the body can present it in a way that that makes sense to the way that they are using this information. You know, additionally then, having things like that colour code and schemes, so it, make, it makes sense because I'm treating, you know, uh, Major League Baseball players and, and there's an association there as well, which is all pretty standard. Um, but really, you know, thinking about presenting it once again in a way that makes sense for that audience makes a, a really, really big difference. The second area which I'm going to talk to is around context. Um, now, it's true that, you know, just a spoonful of context does help the data go down and I hope this little jingle sticks in your head uh, after this. I know it did for me once I put this together, I couldn't stop singing it. But just that little bit of context, just a little bit of help for individuals interpreting the data, um, understanding the data, and then making a decision about the data can make a really big difference. Particularly if you're going out to a wide audience. Now, um, if you are building this content, and I've been on this side myself, 
when you get, you're an analyst, you're working with potentially your power users who really understand the data, who really know the data, um, and, you're, and you're creating dashboards and reports, you know, based on their feedback and the team's feedback. But often they go out to the wider audience, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people that don't potentially have that same knowledge of the information, who aren't the power users, who just want to consume and, and, and use that information for their daily activities. So the more context you can provide, um, so that it really helps them understand and interpret in a, in a stronger way, which is the purpose for, for better decision support. So let me show you um, one example uh, of um, how you can provide just a little bit of context that can make a, a difference um, in a dashboard. So here's uh, an example of a liquor distribution dashboard. So I'm seeing my numbers for my chains, my independents. I'm seeing a breakdown of my uh, product categories across those two uh, groups. And I'm seeing you know, trends over sales. Now straight away, if I'm looking at that without the bit of context in the bottom right corner, I'm thinking, well, 70% of my dollars is, is coming from the chain stores. Um, it's up and down, but you know, as a salesperson or as you know, maybe I should be focusing there um, because it's the bigger end of town and where I should put my efforts. But adding a bit more context around that, as you can see from the kind of note down the bottom, um, it's kind of telling me, you know what, independent stores are actually higher margin. And that's where I have you know, less volatility and I potentially as a salesperson, I've got a bit more to play with if I'm looking at growth opportunities. So maybe um, you know, understanding that, I can look at my strategy a bit differently. If, if, if margin's a big thing in, in, in this world, it is, um, you know, that's potentially gonna influence my decisions in terms of the strategy I'm gonna take forward when it comes to um, you know, the sales directives for the organization. So once again, a little bit of context, it's not overpowering it, it's not everywhere, but if someone who's looking at this at a high level, they can see that, click into the detail behind that, um, and it can make kind of a real difference to informing their decisions um, around you know, their strategy as well. So notes like that, um, that makes sense. Once again, this is a summary level dashboard and really help interpretation uh, and understanding as well. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a little bit of a uh, before and after. So you can get an idea of you know, what's a, a, a simple kind of dashboard that, or a bit of analytics that you might have and how do you maybe turn that into something that is um, design richer and provides more context to make a better decision. So here's an example very simply of showing you know, household energy consumption over you know, a week's period. So I'm looking at like what's my consumption, you know, maybe how much if I've got some solar panels, you know, how much solar energy am I using? Um, I might be pushing that back to the grid so I can see all right, it's trending, it's all kind of similar pattern that, you know, on the fourth, I probably, you know, um, it was a bit uh, cold, might have had the heater on, might have gone up a bit more, et cetera. Um, so it's kind of just showing a pattern, which it's informing me, but that's pretty much, pretty much it. But if I'm kind of maybe looking at the same data, that kind of tracking of consumption over a week, there's different ways we can visualize that and more context around that that could really inform um, I guess in this instance, the household energy user. So let's look at this a little bit differently. So the same information around my energy consumption, I've got my days of the week there, um, but I'm showing that in, in a bit differently. I'm showing it over a 24 hour period, as you can see on the axis down the bottom. And now straight away, visually you can see between you know, five and eight-ish is when there is far more consumption. So I know as my household, I'm thinking, oh yeah, the kids come home, lights are on, um, having their shower, all the things that are typically happening, I'm visualizing in my head because I can see that, yep, all, all my energy's um, being used at that time. In addition to that, you're providing you know, a bit of context around that, that saying, look, your peak energy usage is, is five to seven, um, standard kind of things that, you know what, if you run some time-based applications, it can actually, you know, reduce your electricity bill. And in this example, you're doing a calculation based on what you're spending and um, a reduction in that time. So you're providing some context around what the user's doing and even providing a recommendation for action. Um, so in this example, you know, you're, you're prompting the user to think about, you know, changing patterns and behaviors because the outcome and the action is gonna be saving money. Exactly the same data, 
presenting it in a different way and providing, I guess, hopefully the actions that you want to take place has a little note underneath there um, so they can take that action off the back of that. So I think there's a, a good example of something kind of simple, thinking about presenting it in a way that people are using it because I'm throughout the day I'm using my appliances when I get home, etc. It makes sense to the way I'm using these things. Um, but the outcome is, you know, I want to save money. I don't, you know, I want to think about the environment. So how can I potentially do it in a better way? And it's providing me some recommendations kind of for action uh, as well. Um, to, so that, and that leads me to, I guess, the, the, the last kind of big point I wanted to talk about, which was action. So this is a good example as you can kind of see, you know, the action that you have. And, and in that example, the real value is I could save money every quarter by um, understanding when I'm using that energy and when I can potentially get savings around that. And when you can drive an action, particularly an action based on the data that you're presenting in your applications or your organization, that really creates a massive amount of value. And if particularly if you're kind of creating applications, um, you know, really thinking about the actions that that information provide can make a massive difference than just trying to put charts and numbers on a page to tick a box so you have analytics. Um, so really thinking about the value that it'll bring and the actions that you want to do. So once again, I'm going to start with um, a bit of a before and an after and an after and show you a standard kind of uh, bit of content, adding design to that, thinking about workflow and then bringing that all together um, as part of an application. So now, if you think about a, a job board, like your monsters, et cetera, where you're um, part of an organization and you've got a few uh, vacant roles and you post them up into a job board, as, as all of us who have managed people before have done, um, you go up there and you're tracking it, you're seeing how many people have viewed um, your job ad, how many people have clicked through to see the details, how many people have applied to that. And often, um, some of these job sites will give you an output in terms of kind of how they're tracking so you can understand how well you're doing or not. Now, um, one way you can present that data is like this, right? I've got my ads, I'm seeing, all right, I've got 2,000 people have actually clicked on it, that's great, I have, have seen it. Um, around 700 have gone into the detail behind it and so have read the actual ad and I've got 100 ap applicants. So, you know, simple metrics to look at what my ads are doing. But it doesn't really tell me, I guess, is, is that good? Is that bad? Um, what is the actions it's trying to kind of create, you know, for me as from the job side? And thinking about, I guess, that workflow can really make a big difference to both, in this case, the job site and, you know, those that are posting ads as well. So let's kind of reimagine this in a way that, that thinking about that kind of workflow of data. So here's an example where, you know, once again, just thinking about workflow, presenting in a way that, makes sense to the flow. So straight away I see I've got 45 um, jobs that are listed up there. I know how many I've got. I've got my summary view, but I'm looking at the way that that's converting. I can see the same numbers. I'm looking at those conversion rates, which is great, but most importantly, I'm understanding, well, how does that compare to everyone else? So straight away I'm like, well, great. Once I get to my detailed view, I'm getting more applicants than normal, which is, which is awesome, but there's something up with my summary view. No one's really, Oh, not as many people are jumping in and looking at the information behind that. So maybe I need to add a bit more ad spend, as you can see here, you're you know, putting an action to, to you know, have promote more of these ads um, as part of that. Or maybe I need to then tweak that summary as well to make it a bit stronger, a bit stronger headline, etc. So straight away presenting the same information with some additional context around that and in a way that makes sense from a workflow you're promoting the actions, which is tweak my, tweak my ad copy or spend some more money to surface these ads so I can get more clicks, more views and better app applicants to these roles. Um, now, once again, if I wanted to bring that all together in a really design rich way, I could start to go, all right, let's actually create a, a funnel that is designed in a stronger way that has the context around there. Um, and then this is an example of, you know, maybe I can see devices, I've got the job ads underneath that I can add, you know, straight away. I know where, where I want to, the more important ads that I want to add some more spend to. So I can try to get that in the right way. So going from a really kind of standard, this is what your ads are doing, but this is, I guess, how they're tracking compared to the norm. 
and this is where they're maybe not doing so well and this is where you might want to make some changes or spend some more money to get more adds a more value for the job site because the you know revenue but they're presenting information in a way that makes sense to their customers and will help their customers get more value um, from um, their product or their service as well. Um, so hopefully kind of a good example of seeing all those tied in together, thinking about um, design to present information in the right way, um, thinking about context to really help people understand what's going on, but also thinking about the actions that off the, off the back of that will happen. It's you know improving the ad, spending more money. It's all three of those things combined um, that provides so much value and you're doing it right with um, data and analytics. So enough of the kind of PowerPoint stuff. Let's see a, an example of this in a live in a live setting. So let me just flick my screen really quickly. Hopefully you can see a little application here. So this is a little um, application uh, for our procurement for our liquor sales. So let me log on to our liquor sales app, and this will look like you know pretty standard you know, application with I've got my orders, I've got my numbers, um, I, I can see how things are tracking. So if I look at here, I've got, this is my liquor sales. Um, I can look, you know, with, from a dashboard perspective, I can play around with this. So it's presented in a nice, neat way. I can see my categories around there, but let's look at really enhancing this with some design and action. So if I'm looking at my categories, I can click in here and I might look at my tequilas. I'm a fan of tequila myself, so let's have a look. And once again, you're presenting this to your category manager in a way that will help them interpret, understand, and see what's going on. So I've got a proportionate, you know, uh, visualization there, which I can see it's six percent. So it's a pretty low in my my bottle, as an example. My my big level numbers are here, but I've got my top performers, and I've got a visual ind indicator that I know, you know, Patron's doing well. I've got that visual indicator. I can see that. I can, you know, it's designed in a way that makes sense the way I want to look at my category. And from here, I can see, well, you know, as part of this, I want to, you know, look at more orders as, you know, that goes out to my wholesalers. So in this example, I can look at my brands. I've got a little bit of module that says, you know what, this is based on historical records. This is how many units you want to order. And you've got an action that's built in. So from here, I can look at this. I can go, yep, 84 is right. But you know what, I'm going to just bump this up a little bit. And that will fire off to my procurement application um, automatically because you know I'm making decisions based on data so let's just create that action off the dashboard itself so you think previously you might have you know tabular information or things sitting here you might then go well, great I need to order about 90 I'm going to log on to my procurement application um, search for Montezuma gold find it order 90 jump back in um, but having it all tied together, present it in a beautiful way that allows me to know my categories, and I know what I have to order here, and make a an decision and an action off the dashboard itself provides far more value as an application than having to switch and change between multiple things. So kind of a good example of, I guess, seeing all that information together um, in, in the one spot. Uh, another example I wanted to show you, and I'll just jump into um, Yellowfin here, is once again kind of in a similar vein using this kind of richer design to present information um, in a much stronger way for your category managers. So let me just let me go to the before for a second. I mean, this might be a way that you might typically see information presented in BI tools, which is yeah, which is great. You can see you know, um, details and summaries and stuff like that. But if I'm a category manager and I'm a sales team, you know. Presenting it in a way that makes sense for me is a massive difference. I can look at my high level numbers. Here's that example that we had of the context around chain stores and independent stores. I can see my main categories. I can, I've got my big numbers. I know how that's tracking. I can click on the category that I'm managing and consume the information around that versus trying to interpret and try to read carefully um, items on a, on a tabular type format straight away. So you can imagine presenting this to your customers, you know, versus the traditional kind of spreadsheet and, and the value you can create um, and the difference in terms of how they can interpret and understand the information as well. 
um, can make a massive difference to both you know your applications and you know your BI initiatives that you're trying to roll out. So if there's kind of one thing I wanted to I guess leave you with uh, today, and this is you know apart from you know Julie Andrews spinning around in your head all day and all evening, is that really kind of that action plus design equals value. So it's just really thinking about not just presenting numbers on the page, but thinking about when, you, when you're presenting information, who's using it, how are they gonna use it, and how are they gonna use it to make decisions? And then presenting it in a way that's gonna help them make that decision. So it might be making that decision faster, like in the example of sports tech, so I can understand and interpret. It might be making a decision on that page, because um, you're driving that and the data's driving that decision. So really just thinking beyond what's on the page but how they're going to use that information to make a decision because then that's when you get real value um, from your analytics initiatives both building products and at an enterprise level as well. But really that's what I wanted to cover as part of the 30 odd minutes I'm at 26, 27 not too bad. Um, really I said I wanted to touch on those key items I want to just talk at a, at a high level around design kind of context and action and really have you thinking about those things as part of that. So, but if you wanted, I guess, more, particularly around these, these topics, you know, Yellowfin has, you know, a lot of design examples on our website. We've got a design gallery here, which has, you know, a few really beautiful examples of how to potentially present data in different ways for different use cases. There's financial services, there's health, this one's aged care, um, just in ways that you can present data that kind of makes sense and get you thinking about um, presenting it in a workflow that makes sense for your customers and your users as well. You know, we've also got a visualization guide with the example I showed you earlier around the energy, you know, it's important to try to think about what makes sense from a visualization perspective. So we do have guides around this that'll help you kind of think about, as I scroll down a bit further, you know, what type of visualization makes sense with the data that you have and really thinking about it in the context of really, really good design uh, as well. But you know, if you're like me and you just wanna have a play yourself, I'd always recommend just trying with your own data. Um, jump on the website, you know, fill, fill this out. One of the team will, will be able to provide the software to you and just have a play, see what's possible. Um, because it's you know, connected to your data source, connect to just about everything, JDBC for relational sources, all that APIs for cloud sources. And just start to have a play and see what's possible. And, and once again, thinking about action and workflow to kind of create something that just provides potentially more value for your users and your customers. But thank you everyone. Um, really appreciate either getting up, you know, morning uh, if you're in the kind of Southern Hemisphere or, or, or evening if you're in other places. Um, and um, if you wanna get in touch, jump on the website as well or, or you know, via, via email, but appreciate your time today and, and um, happy to now take any questions that are coming through on the question panel? So first question, is this being recorded for later viewing and sharing? Yes, um, the team will be packaging this up um, on completion and it'll be available uh, via our YouTube page and on our website and a few of the normal places uh, as well. Next question, uh, does the design example that you showed um, need heavy coding? Uh, good question, uh, the short answer is no. And let me show you what I mean by that. So with Yellowfin itself, and I'll just jump in here, um, we're a kind of a low code, no code type tool. So if I jump in the back end here and show you this, it's not heavy coding and weeks to kind of do this, it is a drag and drop interface where you've got, you know, text elements, images, you know, drop in, you know, reports itself. And all these can be kind of moved around. And if anyone's kind of familiar with design tools, you've got you know, ability to, you know, change style, fonts, color, everything is is um, editable and clickable as you would be designing. So you don't need to learn a coding language. You don't need to, you know, be, you know, it's about a, a drag and drop experience that you can kind of, um, you know, build these design rich experiences as part of um, your applications and send them out to your users as well. Um, I'm a data person, uh, how do you start to build something? It's a similar question. Um, so with something like, like a design dashboard like this, so if I go back to your kind of 
what a lot of people were familiar with in terms of you know, kind of the the block kind of dashboard and reporting format. You know, we have a a templated version um, within Yellowfin where you can kind of just drag it into these kind of blocks, which makes sense. With this design rich version, um, we have this, it's called Canvas. Now, I always start, now I'm a data person, I'm not a designer. When I um, want to make something that is uh, kind of front facing is rich, I think about the information I want to present, think about the workflow, um, mock it up, and I get one of my design team to help, you know, with images and assets that I can then drop in. So the way that we kind of facilitate that within Yellowfin, if I go to create a dashboard, and let me do something simple here, is you have the ability to kind of create a blueprint in Yellowfin and try to mock something up. So you might get um, images from your you know, design team, or you might have a, um, you know, a cache of those. So it might have a header I could you know, kind of drop in if I'm looking at my Game of Thrones campaign as an example, right? Um, and you can then start to mock up data before putting it out. So we've got this um, option called Blueprint. So I might just, you know, drop something in here. Maybe I want to see, um, let's just keep something simple, like the liquor sales. I want to look at my product categories and my unit sold. And, you know, within a few seconds, I can start to just kind of mock something up, you know, roughly on the page. You know, I might share that with um, one of my team and just start to get things going. Um, with my designer um, and get this in the right look and feel and frame before you know sending it out to the wider group so we've got tools thinking about that will allow you to kind of mock things up create a blueprint share it amongst your teams um, get some input from a designer because you know i always work with our design they put some assets in, in in my directory and i can drag them in and just place them based on the templates that have been provided um, uh, as, as part of that so yeah um, that's an example of, of uh, kind of how you'd start to be in, begin and create that for you. Um, can Canvas be embedded into my application and iframe another message? Yes, can, yes, Canvas dashboards can certainly be uh, embedded uh, into your application. So if you look at this application here, um, this has got this has got a pop up that has a Canvas dashboard that's been embedded into um, the application, like so. Um, you can also put everything into an iframe, let me just re-log on, of course I've clicked out. Um, you can, into your, your question there, you've got, you know, components here of our own API or a pop-up. If I go into here, this is an example where I've got that Canvas dashboard that's part of an iframe um, within there. So, and this is just, you know, you've basically embedded all of Yellowfin and just changed the header and footer. So kind of simple integration to get it up and running quickly, um, which is all possible because, you know, obviously, a lot of our market is embedding and, and they, uh, integrating Yellowfin in other applications. So there are multiple ways in which you can do that from putting the whole thing in an iframe to taking, you know, a component out, let me back in there, um, as part of, you know, grabbing components and, and integrating it via APIs in your application as well. Um, what code is generated at the back end? Is it reusable? So um, if you're talking about the code for the dashboards um, and, and the content you see here. So if I go back to, let me just close this one here. Uh, I'll just do it. So I go to something that is richer, like my example just here. So what is actually generated in the back of here is, you know, JavaScript, CSS, HTML. Now, um, while we have the drag and drop interface, you, if you wanted to do something more sophisticated or a little bit outside it, we actually do enable you to use code mode, which you can then edit the HTML, JavaScript, CSS, if you want to do something outside of the norm. So we give you both those options if you wanted to do drag and drop versus wanted to do something um, more intensive with coding, but that's what's generated um, off the back of that. Cool, yes, it's on the dashboard, awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, those are, I guess, those are, the, I guess, the questions that we have. I think there's more coming through. Fantastic. Um, can a Canvas employees be created that allow different reports and data queries to be easily changed within? Um, yes and no, in, in a sense. So when you create a report, uh, you get, or when you create a dashboard, should I say, you, there is a blank Canvas that you can start with. Um, when you wanted, to, we've seen we're using Canvas as a template is, let me just save this is that you create a you know a version of this that you could then 
copy as your t canvas template if you want to use the same look and feel and format um, and then you can amend and edit as you need to as well. Cool. All right, everyone. Well, that is, um, I think that concludes the questions. Um, if there's any more, um, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, please contact us on you know, the usual channels via the website. Um, once again, thank you for your time uh, today. Really appreciate it and looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks, everybody.